गुड इवनिंग सर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर हैविंग इंटरेक्शन विथ मी दिस इवनिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच सर Oh, pleasure is mine. Pleasure is mine, sir. Before I ask you anything, I I I just want to put something to you, which I want to learn it from you. Speaking for myself, I am super admirer of your quality of wit and courage. Advocates usually get trapped into the court when they are cornered by the court. but i have heard it once and uh, it has been said by one of the high court judge that mr oza you have the best art to to come out of the uh, situation when court corners you and uh, that i just want to have guru mantra for that wit that you have in have in you sir Oh, there is nothing like Guru Mantra. It's all an inbuilt craft. Moment you stand on your feet and start arguing, in less than one minute, you have to judge how the mind of the judge in which direction it goes. And you should never lose your confidence. You must have faith in you. You must have faith in your matter. and you must always be committed with your matter and when you get committed with your matter not attached i am using the word committed you will automatically find the way to get out or to tackle the situation but that you use it as a bridge excellently sir in all difficult situation you can you could have you could you can definitely come out very easily and that i am very really admire of it bit uh, thank you sir uh, question is uh, it's uh, all god's grace nothing special in sir you uh, i mean your father mr n r oza uh, he was the first uh, senior designated advocate of the gujarat high court and dean of the bar he was majorly practicing on appellate side but you sir started your practice completely on the different side on the writs majorly and you have mastered that uh, practice how have you done that sir how could you achieve to do that look the day i became a lawyer my father told me that from today your practice is independent in no way connected with your practice you will have your own clerk you will have your own pa your own office and your own litigation not in one matter you will engage me as a counsel nor expect any matter from my side to assist and that was a challenge he threw and i accepted it and that's nothing that i have done it's all grace of god that right from day one my practice clicked and my first month filing was on or around 40 matters so who you in fact you will be surprised yes sir in 1982 when i started my practice my father had two cars he sold off one mm -hmm. he said that now when you can get it on your own mm -hmm. you buy it oh sir who you consider to be your mentor in the uh, in your professional career look in my initial days that is those were the days when i was not a lawyer in first year law i used to attend the court me and justice mr shah regularly used to attend the court right from 1979 to 82 my role model was late mr ayan nanavati but before i could become an advocate unfortunately he left for heavenly abode and thereafter if you ask me my mentor is late mr giridat des sir i have some uh, instructions that you consider even mp thakkar to be your uh, idol can you just share something on that yes i i i in fact don't consider him to be my ideal i consider him to be much more than that i have learned many things he was one judge who used to encourage juniors beyond a point and in his court juniors 
were not only encouraged but were really lifted from nowhere and his socialist approach is commitment firm commitment for have nots down trodden really attracted me towards him and in my career whatever i am today 50% is honorable justice mp sir you have received a designation at the age of 39 very young age to have a designation how it has actually uh, came to you how how it has happened in fact in 1995 when justice kripal was the chief justice of gujarat high court he said that not four or five designated seniors are enough a high court must have at least if not more 25 senior advocates and he asked and called many and designated many he called me also i said no sir i am only 35 now please don't designate me my practice will be ruined and nobody is going to hand me as a counsel at the age of 35 because then the practice was quite unknown in gujarat high court like supreme court this practice is there from 1950 in gujarat high court this dual practice was absolutely unknown very little known i would say so i was really afraid he got it passed in full court but then i and requested him with folded hands and uh, he was good enough to defer it then when advocate general the then advocate general you know we had advocate general for 40 years and 9 months the same advocate general late mr james tapko he said that now it's high time that i should get designation about down to his command sir in 2001 uh, you have been called for to join bench and you have not actually accepted that so any specific reason for that sir no personally i feel looking to my nature i won't fit in as a good judge and i never wanted discredit to be attached to my judge i am very sure even today i am not meant to become a judge i have several several lacunas in me which will not make a good judge in me sir uh, there are about 100 juniors who, have, who had been associated with your office by now and i am since i am aware of the fact that every one of you used to call you bhai and you make them your family so how why i mean how come that is possible to have such a big family and how you maintain that what is how do you actually how do you develop a relation with juniors who still admire you yes you know meaning of word bhai has a very different connotation in hindi and in gujarati big difference true sir in hindi bhai means something else yes, yes. true Yes. Gujarati bhai. Gujarati bhai is addressed to an yes. Gujarati bhai is addressed to an elder brother, and one whom you consider as elder brother, you address him as bhai with respect. I never encourage the practice to call me or address me as sir or something else. I always treat my office colleagues as my younger brothers. in my very earlier days of practice there were junior attached to my office who were elder to me in age so i always used to tell them that please address me in same person singular you are quite elder to me don't address me as bhai or something like that bhai is normally meant for an elder brother but of course they didn't accept to my request but it's the practice since then that even office students will not call me sir my staff will not call me sir they will all address me as bhai because i personally feel when that distance of sir and other thing goes and when you treat your office colleagues your office staff as a family they work with more commitment you are telling them you are blasting on them they don't take it till they take it as it coming from a family member and that's how we work uh, like one family right from 82 those juniors who have joined me till today they all address me as bhai 
Sir, during one of your hearing in the Supreme Court, where you have been appearing for uh, for the elections of Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation, the judge then, uh, Justice Sabarwal, has asked you to shift to Delhi. Uh, any reason for specific not uh, actually shifting till date to the Supreme Court? So you know, Justice Sabarwal was very kind enough to say that Oza, you are a Supreme Court staff. Don't waste yourself in Gujarat. That's what he said from the dais. Yes, yes. But to be very honest, you know, I don't lie. I have a very bitter tongue. But with it to honesty, I couldn't muster courage. That was the only reason. That fear, for the first and last time, that fear overtook my mind was that occasion when I thought, what if I don't click in Delhi? Today here in Ahmedabad, I have such a big following, such a huge practice. Of course, nothing as compared to Supreme Court practice, but reasonably very good practice. And fear stopped me from switching over to it. Sir, was becoming a lawyer was always your passion or you have searched for some other career option prior to choosing law? No, you know, since childhood, every child, child psychology is very important. And though I was not a student of psychology, my extra reading on that subject has been quite substantial. Every child has a psychology. Child sometimes is wedded to studies. Some child is wedded to arts, sports. I was a very ordinary student and actually when I saw Tare Zamipar and that second child of a family whom Amir Khan groomed, <laughs> I saw that ch child, in that child I saw my own childhood. Mm -hmm. But by the grace of God, I was very ordinary at studies, but all those speaking competitions, debates or speeches, all gold medals and first prize always came to me. Plus, I joined NCC at a very young age. I passed my C certificate when I was in second year commerce. And my first choice was to join army. And you'll be surprised to know I was even offered. I cleared the test and I was offered lieutenant's post in the army, which is equivalent to two stars, a junior commissioned officer. Some or how, without going into the details, Last minute, I switched over to law. Sir, any interesting matter or instances that you had ever uh, in, uh, came across in the courts, in the matters that you would like to share with us? Interesting in what sense? Sir, some interesting... You know, interesting in what? Which in has, reference to what? With, which, which has some anecdotes with against the judges or with your opponents and that is actually converted into the uh, great anecdotes of the court proceedings? No, op 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 opponents, opponents are, we are opponents only till the time the matter is called out and it gets over, hearing gets over. Outside the court, there is nothing like opponent. But yes, you are right, I have never tolerated anything nonsense from any court. And on number of occasions, at least not for me, but for the members of the bar, I had some, some very bitter fights with the court, some heated exchanges with the court. But as we have a system, judges also forget it moment the matter gets over. And they also realize that there is nothing personal, that things pass by. Sir, what do you expect from an advocate who briefs you in the matter? How, how, what shall he prepare with? What shall you require him to be prepared with? You know, my, 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 my biggest difficulty is that I get annoyed very time and again on my briefing advocates. It's good that they still brief me. Yes. I want them to be fully prepared with the matter. 
right? Because these days you don't know query what query will come and from where it will come. So right from the first line to the last line of the matter, relevant or irrelevant, in initial days you should not consider. That is one. Secondly, while reading the matter, he must and should anticipate what will be the query of the court because he has to. We don't know till we get up which way judge would react. If whether he will be on favor, but you have to always keep one thing in mind that judge is going to be against you. And these are the queries which are likely to come from the court. Thirdly, which unfortunately time and again I have been saying to all lawyers that please this will help you in future. Jot down the authorities which you cite, jot down the authorities which other side cites, write the subject, come home and jot it down in your diary or in your computer. So that when the when need arises in a second matter, you have not to go around, move around and find out. It should be there in your computer or in your diary. We who belong to old school of thought still operate through diary. But uh, present day generation, of course, rightly so, they operate through computer and they have every data in their computer. So that's how I always say and I secondly I teach them always be prepared to get being fired by your senior whom you are briefing by arguing. Because when he gets confused, he needs some time. That's what I do it. When a query comes to me, is put to me, I normally, when I find it a little difficult, I try to divert, I try to frown upon my junior unnecessarily also sometimes. But that's the time I'm taking to react. Right. And everything, patience, tolerance, and uh, deep study of the matter. And first of all, as Mr. Girida Desai told me, first day I became a lawyer and went to his house to seek his blessings. He said, Yatin, look, these days it's more important to know the judge than to know the law. True, sir. And that, what Mr. Girida Desai taught me, I am teaching my younger generation. Right, sir. Uh, sir, have you ever actually came across the situation where you have where you where you say that there is no merit matter in the merit? I mean, there is no merits in the matter. Look, I am very clear. I'll advise my client whatever I think best in his interest. On number of occasions, I have advised the clients that. They this is not a worth contesting, worth even fighting. But I am equally clear, I don't believe in that usual fairness. As people put it, that yes, my lord, I don't have any merits in my matter, or my client wants your lordship judgment and not my opinion. My opinion will be very clear to my client. Still, if my advocate on record or client tells me to file it, I mean filing will be by an advocate on record to appear, I will put my best. Even in the dead matter, I will never ever get up and say that I have no merits. I will fight to the best of my ability and with the best of strength that God has bestowed on me, I absolutely don't believe to conceive. I will fight the case once I appear to the best of my ability. No giving up. It's for me not to take up the matter. And I don't take up the matters in spite advocate on record or in good old days clients telling me, sir, we will lose, never mind you, try, no. When my conscience says no, no. But if I take up matter, there is nothing like concession. Sir, you had been president for more than 18 years by now in the Gujarat uh, Advocate Records, uh, Gujarat Advocate Association. So, what uh, what do you want to say with respect to bar and bench relations now, which is prevailing these days, and the role of judiciary judiciary in that? 
Now this this question has direct relation with the question that you had put to me earlier, Justice MP. Mm. Can you believe it? I was at the bar with a standing of three days mm. and a hopeless rotten matter came to be rejected by Justice MP Tucker, bench of Justice MP Tucker, Justice Navarro. They heard me for about 10-15 minutes, then they said, young man, what is your name? I gave my name, he said, any senior we would have dismissed it in 30 seconds. We gave you audience for 15 minutes, I was so happy. But then I was able to open up three days practice. And I said that, sir, a junior would have got 15 more matters if this would have been entertained. And immediately, rule was issued. So that was that is the you think of, of this this is justice pd desai sitting from the dais used to guide the juniors said he used to from dais say that please incorporate this in your petition he used to give dictation junior used to write post lunch he will come with the amendment and order passed i mean there are thousand and one such instances now that distance has, I mean, that distrust between bench and the bar, and I would not hesitate in saying, I am only speaking for Gujarat. I have no idea about other states. What we find is that distrust between the bench and the bar has grown. Gujarat has been fortunate to get very good chief justices who have tried to see that the gap or the bridge is not widened but narrowed but yet there is no comparison when we tell our juniors present day juniors about our experience in 1982 83 84 up to 90 they either don't believe us or they take it that we are saying some fairy tales right great distrust Bench and Bar both will to work together to see that that uh, distance and uh, bridge is narrowed and harmony is created. Harmony will result into two things. It will improve the work culture of the court and atmosphere of a court. Yes. So, and uh, I don't know why. Hmm. But judges more or less looks at an advocate with great suspicion. Hmm. In good, in earlier days, judges used to see that there is one point they will admit the matter. Today, I am not saying, I am not generalizing. Experience has shown that in large number of cases, exercise is undertaken to find out one point to dismiss it. Hmm. This is where the distrust has grown. So any, any advice to overcome this situation by the, at least on the side of the bar that we can do to at least... Uh... Only two things, two things. Let me be very careful, don't make any casual or rest statement. Because these days that is are not able to take it that lightly as in good old days they used to take. Today they don't spare even a junior of one year standing. Mm. So be very careful and watchful. Mm. I mean, I don't know if I am eligible or competent to give this advice. Because I have been, I have done it for good 20 years of my practice that I used to dodge the matters looking to the fact that this matter will not be good to argue before a judge. I used to sit in the court if I find that this matter will get a good result before me judge. But now, in those days, it was good. Now, don't ask for unnecessary attendance. As and when the matter is called out before judge X, Y, or Z, finish it off. Right. So, I, I'll give you one illustration. In one matter, I had challenged the virus of an egg. Mm -hmm. I had four years practice then. 86. Hmm. It was an ordinary matter of suspension of a police officer. Hmm. And matter came up 
before a division bench on which a senior judge was justice abadi i tender my apology i don't remember i don't remember the name of the other judge on the bench and other side took an objection that what is the question of virus in a suspension matter justice abadi laughed smiled and said all right he might have thought that division bench is more convenient <laughs> nowadays you can't expect that so better thing is don't avoid as per roster it is assigned called out finish right sir these two things if you keep in mind i think relations will smoothen up since you have asked only what members of the bar should do i have restricted two members of the bar sir how are you passing your time during this lockdown period now Uh, no now there is no schedule now there is no schedule uh, these days i have got four five novels on napoleon so i am busy reading that mm. i am giving good time to meditation yoga and good rest so that my sugar level comes under control and fortunately it has to a great extent sir any change that you expect in the legal fraternity after this lockdown period what i first of all against shutting down the court that's my personal view right of course how the court has to function in what manner is absolute prerogative of the chief justice and unless consulted bar as no say i can see to that right okay, sir look at people are in jail without trial as a measure of preventive detention since december we are in april detention matters gujarat until the time justice kripal was the chief justice up to 95 used to get disposed of bari a period where we only had 12 judges for 3 years 86 to 89 only 12 only 12 right hmm? sir uh, any why should matters not be conducted i am at a total loss you are telling somebody to be in jail for and mind you i don't have a single detention matter so i am so freely say hmm. not one where i am appearing and after having said this i will not appear in any pending matter even if sought to be briefed by any of it hmm. no this is not the right sir uh thank you very much sir for all your uh, all your advices towards judiciary and towards the advocacy as well we are so thankful to you uh, for sparing time with us sir thank you very much thank you